bacon in a waffle maker. Oh yeah. Look at that. Look at those peaks. It's Mount Patriarch. Look at this. I can't tell you how much I need that. Listen to that. Oh, come on. Wow. See you. Welcome back everybody for another camping with Tony and Bruce who is next to me. Let me uh, just pull over here and turn this around a bit so you can see Brucey. Oh, the joys of YouTube. There you go. There you can just see him. Okay, so we are today going to camp on the top of a mountain. The weather here in New Zealand has been awful, really bad. Um, Auckland, which is the main city on the North Island, I'm on the South Island, Auckland has just been decimated by rain. So there's still a lot of rain around. We'll see how this goes. Um, but I'll bring you back. I've got to stop off at the supermarket, get some food, so I'll bring you back for that. Right, I'm in the supermarket. I've got to grab some stuff. We've already got some pizzas for dinner. Let's get some wine and some other things. I'll come back to you in the car. Right, I got the shopping. Um, that was quite funny. So uh, someone stopped me in the supermarket. Said they're a long time follower. Sorry, I didn't get your name. Um, but uh, hi to you and your mates. Right, off to camp. Um, I'll bring you back when uh, we're on the top of the mountain looking for a camp spot. The plan is park up. I've got a, I'm not going to use the roof tent. I've got a tent in the back. I've used before, it's an elevated tent and it sits on top of a platform. Um, so I should be able to set that up anywhere and have it under the awning of the truck. Uh, be completely protected that way. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty warm and it's so humid. It's like 95% humidity. So I've got the uh, EcoFlow air conditioning unit with me. Uh, but I'll definitely be needing that tonight because it's gonna be a, a sweltering night. All right, everyone, bring you back at the top of the mountain. All right, everyone, so we're at the top of the mountain. I think we're 1,300 meters. So what is that, 4,000 feet. Um, it's gone onto a really rough single track. So what I wanted to do is, I can't see what's around the corner here. I don't know this road. Um, so let's get out, let's go and have a wonder. I found a spot that I think might be a good campsite. So, you know, if worst comes to worst, we're gonna stay here. Let me just let Brucey out. Otherwise, we'll carry on. But I think this spot will do. Come on, Brucey. Um, because it's a, quite protected, actually. It's, um, if I show you around, we're surrounded by these miniature pines. Um, the truck, the truck acts as a block as well. We are in the clouds, look at this. So this, this is the road that I've just come up and I'm telling you, like, can you see anything down there? Oh, you can just about make the valley out down there. It's, that's a sheer drop, isn't it, Brucey? <laughs> that's, yeah, I don't know. That was pretty nerve wracking driving up there. It's single lane, very dodgy. Bruce is gonna lead the way. We're gonna have a look around this corner, see what else is going on up here. I, you can see how narrow it is and that the drops are just sheer. But the higher you go, the higher you go, there's less chance of there being any trees. So in that spot there where I am, got all the pine trees, it's kind of protected. The further we climb, the less trees there'll be, the more exposed I'm gonna be. It's, uh, it's quite a bit cooler up here, but it's still really warm. I'd say it's, oh wow, look at this drop. 
Look down there. I don't think the camera is doing this any justice. This road could go on for miles and miles. Oh, there's another pulling spot here. That's a lot smaller than the spot I'm in and a lot more exposed. I don't know, I think I've got a pretty good spot. Oh yeah, look, that goes on and on and on. And you can see the wind blowing across there and the clouds coming over the top. That, I think that's the spot. Come on, Bruce. Come on, let's go back to the car. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Bruce loves it. Okay, so plan is get the, uh, get the awning set up, get the tent set up. It's pretty windy up here. It's coming straight at us this way. Hmm. I don't know. I've, I've turned the truck around and I'm aiming that way because, oh yeah, so I hadn't come that way. I, I actually stopped there and turned around. So we were coming up there. I should have explained that at the start. The reason I turned it around is that um, I, wherever I set the tent up, I don't want the tent beside the road. I want the truck beside the road. So the way I've got it set up there, it's a lot more protected. Man, just look at that. <laughs> it's just such a drop down that narrow, gnarly road. And it is, do you wanna have a quick peek? It's pretty grim, I have to say. I was, I was clenched the whole way. It's just, it's just a couple of hundred meters of it, but it's enough. And when you see <laughs> what's down the side there, the sheer drop, yeah. Look, we're just in the clouds here. But I can feel the warmth of the sun trying to come through. I'm not sure if it's gonna rain or not. We, we've had a sprinkling coming up. I don't know what happened here. They must have cleared it from a slip. But you can see, see Bruce has been cooped up in the car for a couple of hours, so this walk is good for him. So I came scrambling up here and those corners, it's really narrow. And there's no barriers to stop you. I mean, if you went over the edge there, well, it's all over. really see the valley from up here. Check it out. That's, uh, that's the Wairau River all the way over there. And the floodplain. Look at this. Look at it. Look how narrow it is. And I'll tell you what, when you're in the driver's seat, it seems a hell of a lot narrower than it is. Especially when you're looking at the, the drop off here. Yeah. Bruce, come on. So lots of slips coming down here. So you don't want to be parked anywhere around here anyway. Um, come on. All right. Bring you back at camp. Let's get it all set up. But I think this is my spot. I want it to be high up. I want it to be out of the way. There are a couple of spots further back, uh, but they just felt a bit claustrophobic in the woods. Nothing like this. When it clears, when you just get out the cloud, <laughs> this is a proper mountain pass. Yeah, so as I said, I didn't want to be in the woods. Completely hemmed in. Seemed very claustrophobic. 
I want it to be out here, a bit more exposed to the elements, but just a bit more fun. All right, everyone, bring you back setting up camp. Okay, welcome back, everybody. So, all ready to go. Uh, first things first is Brucey needs his little treat, so let's sort that out the back of the truck. Okay, Brucey gets his pig's ear. You gonna sit pretty? Good boy, lovely. Okay, so what I need to do is um, get the awning out uh, and set that up first. So I need the straps to connect it to, and then we need to get it undone, get it out. Once the awning is set up, then I'll bring the tent out um, and I want the back of the tent to be facing that way. And I'm gonna be, the front of the tent will be facing the truck just for maximum protection from the wind. Okay, let's get on with it. Okay, so there's a few components to this awning, this Iron Man Delta wing. This will end up there as a wall, uh, as a windbreak. Okay, so first things first is I've got a strap. Get the straps to this side and hook it onto there. Okay, two straps. So hook what to one end. Connect that to the roof. That's good. And the same for the other end. So I've made sure I'm not blocking the, the road, so I don't have to worry about that. Plenty of room. This is not a busy route, as you can imagine, anyway. Now, am I on the right bit here? It's two sections, okay. Well, let's try that one there, All right. Okay, that's all good. All right. So as you can see, this bit here, this, this is a windbreak and it can be attached here or on the other side. Um, let me just make sure this is as tight as it will possibly go. Okay, now it is. Now, depending on how windy it is, I might have to peg it down. So the question is, what do I want to do with the windbreak? Do I even need it? 
I mean, you can hear it's quite windy. But this might just catch it. Ah, uh, all right, everyone, I need to know what to do with this. Do I set it up? Yeah, you know what? I think I will set it up. Okay, pegs. Got my roll bag of pegs. Right, there's no elegant way to do this. Yeah, I think, think about that. So there's a lot of rock around here. So you've got to have these massive pegs that actually puncture the rock. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. Okay. Same for this one. Okay. And then this one. Actually, I don't know how to do this one. Could just attach it with a cord. Now I'll put it like that, that'll be fine. Big rock. There you go. Okay, that's not going anywhere. Right, perfect. Look at camp, all set up. And the sun is trying to break through. Okay. So the plan is now, put the tent here with the back facing the camera there. That way I get to sit out, look out the beautiful view over there. So let's do that. Let's get the tent set up. And then once I've got the tent set up, I can work out where to put the poles. Actually, let me put, let me put the end ones out now, just so then this has got support. It's strong enough you don't actually have to use these, but. It's, it's this one that I don't want to put down yet because it might be in the way. Okay, and then one on the last, just gonna do this one on the other side. All right, we're good. Okay, so the stretcher first. This thing, this thing is a beast. So it's by Oz Tent, and it's designed to put a tent on top. Yeah, so, actually that pole might be a little bit in the way. I can move them. <laughs> Uh, now you might be saying, well, why don't, why don't I just use the roof tent? I've got a roof tent. A couple of reasons for that. One, Bruce can't come up in the roof tent. 
and I'm not going to camp on the mountain up here without Bruce in the tent with me. And two, if it does get windy, I don't want to be up there. The roof tent was always designed to be a last resort measure. Okay, so I don't need the tent under the awning. I just want enough space. Actually, that is pretty perfect. Yeah, okay. Now I've got to remember what you do. You thread these bars through. I seem to recall you've got to be a bit of a strong man to do this. I got this the right way? Yeah, got it the wrong way. Okay, so it goes like that. Okay, just talk amongst yourselves. Let me move that camera around so you can see what I'm doing because I can't tell what you can see. Okay, so I was all, I was all blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and you probably couldn't even see me. Maybe it was a bonus. All right. So one end. Oh yeah, I remember now. Okay. The other end. Now this stretcher is very, very strong. As I say, it is designed, it's not really designed for sleeping on, it's designed for putting an entire tent on. Yeah, this is the bit I remember was difficult. Yeah. I struggled with this last time. I'm sure there was a way to do it. This is not for the faint of heart to try and do. Have I done it on the wrong side first? Sun's coming out. <laughs> okay. That goes there. Wrong end. Ah, yes. I was meant to that meant to put that one on for last. Okay. Because the handle is that end. Alright. So there's one that's slightly longer end. That's the one that goes on last. Because it gives you a handle to pull. That's right. Yep, that's better, okay. Right, now I need to lock it. I can't remember how you do that either. Oh, anti-sway bars, here we go. So these things stop it rocking side to side. Okay. Nice. Now to put the tent on and the tent attaches to it. Um, so you don't even really need to peg it down. It's so heavy, um, but you can peg it down. Okay, the big tent. So this is If I can get it out, he said, right, this is the RS, what is it? RS1, sorry, my friend's going all over the place here. Let me just sort that out as well. Okay, so this is the RS1, they call it a swag in Australia. 
I don't know where the term originally came from. I'm sure someone will tell me. One of my good folks, good listeners, viewers. Okay, and I've completely forgotten how you set this up because I've only done it twice. But I'm sure we'll figure it out. It is a cool tent though, I have to say. It is very cool. Ah, that was it. Wasn't complicated at all. So from memory, what you do is you get in and you just pop it up and lock it into place. So let's try it. You get in, you pop it up. And click it into place. <laughs> okay. Oh my God, it's so hot in here. Oh, wow, it's, it could be the hottest tent in the world. <laughs> okay, that's why I bought the aircon. All right, and then you strap it onto the bed. Oh, I can't remember how you do that at all. I think it's like this. One, I know it's riveting stuff. Well, I've somehow got that completely wrong. You know what, I struggled with this last time. Couldn't for the life of me work out what you were meant to do. <sighs> All right, let me figure this out and come back to you. Okay, I figured it out, right. And it comes with a very funky mattress that's gonna be home for me and Bruce tonight. Very comfy mattress. That. Oh, I can't explain how hot it is in here. The sun's not even shining on it. It's just so well insulated. Good Lord, it's hot. There's plenty of room. So it also comes with a couple of poles um, because there is a tarp. So I could set the tarp up to give just that extra bit of wind protection to stop the wind coming over the top. Should we do that? Let's have a look. And it's reflective, mater reflective material. So you see, it goes like that. Now it does have tie points. It'd be interesting if it would actually fit any of these, but it won't. So I could just use the poles. Now the only disadvantage of that is then I've got to guy it out. Oh, I don't want to do that. No, I don't want to do that. I don't need that. So what we'll do is we'll just flick it back like that. I think you can secure it to the back somehow. Oh, maybe you can't. Hmm. Okay. All very complicated. It's got so many hanging points, you'd have thought that one of them would do that. 
Okay. We'll work that out later. Right. So I've got loads of guy lines that I can set up. So what I'm going to do is set all the guys up. Yeah, I'm going to set all the guys up and then... Oh, it's, it's, it's just nice in here. It's a cocoon of warmth. I mean, it's, it's warm anyway, but in there it's baking. I'm definitely going to need the air conditioning tonight. <laughs> I'm so glad I've got that with me. Um, is it going to rain? That's the thing. So if it rains, we're going to want that like that. And then everything will flow off the back. Yeah. Oh, I guess I better roll this back up. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring you back and I'm going to just guy everything out. So, bring you back in a couple of minutes. I've made an error. All my bedding is in the rooftop tent. <laughs> Which I now can't get to because I've put the whole awning out. So I've got to find a way <laughs> to, to get into the rooftop tent from the back, which can't be done, which means I'm going to have to undo the awning. <sighs> I did this last time. I forgot to get my bedding out. Oh, okay. Let's get on with it. Yeah. So the problem I've got is there is just no way to get to that. Oh, okay. I wonder if I can swing this end round without absolutely knocking over the whole tarp. It's worth a try. Let's see what happens. You know, knowing me, this is going to end in disaster. Okay. It's leaning on that pole. Hey, you know what? We might have done it. All right. Let's get the bedding out. Got my pillow. What else I got? Sleeping bag. Quilt. Yep, that's it. That's all I need. Let's go through all that just for that. All right, let's tuck this back down again. Anything else in there I need? No. It's always set up. So I've, I've always got this set up just in case wherever I go, I need to get in here and camp. But... Yeah, Bruce can't get up here. There is a ladder in here. It's just a bit of faff, that's all. But to be honest, I've used it a few times now and I actually like it. I do like it. And it is convenient having it there the whole time, ready to go with all my bedding in. Safe space. Yeah. And it is storm proof. It's just in heavy wind, the truck moves around so much that you do as well. All right, that's done. See that? Okay, that wasn't so bad. I was whining a bit there. All right, let's try that again. All right. Hey, Brucey. Gotta love this top. It is brilliant. So I have to put this on top, this little pad, just because it hits the top there. Okay, bedding is done.
Oh my God, it's so hot in there. So hot. <laughs> uh. All right, we're looking good. So what do I need now? I need my chair and my table. My chair. Uh, now, for those of you who've watched a long time, I've got a new lens. I don't know if it's any good. We'll see. It's not as wide angle as my other one, but we'll see. It's meant to be a good lens. I know most of you don't care about that, but I just thought I'd mention it. Okay, chair. Look at that. Oh, I've got like a little safe space here now. Out of the wind. Okay, table. When the sun does try and break through, it gets really warm. <coughs> right now, you've all seen me use this table loads of times before. But this time, it actually comes with a shelf. So I'm going to use that. I do love this table. It's, um, I don't know, who is it? They sent it to me. King Camp, that's it. And it's bamboo. Now, how much do you want to bet? Even once I've got this set up, I forget that I've got it set up and I end up eating my dinner on my lap. Okay, so how do you attach this shelf? Make sure we we'll get it the right way up. Yep. Oh, I see. Yep, okay, got it. All right, all done. Now, I'll probably forget that this is even on here. Lock into place. There you go. There you go. Can you see that? Got a little shelf. Look at that. Basket to put stuff in. Okay, let's set this up beside the truck. There we go. All good. Ah. Oh. The sun's coming out. Oh, you know what? I forgot to guy the uh, I forgot to guy the tent out. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll do it before bedtime, just in case I've got to move it at all. All right, let me move you around a bit so you can see clearly. How's that? A bit wonked. Hold on. Let me fix this. How's that? Is that better? Ah, oh, well, that's bright. Check it out. Now you can probably tell from the camera, from the microphone, I don't know if you can hear the wind blowing, but I'm, feel, I'm not feeling any wind here at all, none. It's just going straight around the truck acting as a brilliant windbreak. I mean, I honestly, not even the slightest breeze, which means I'm gonna roast in this thing tonight, but I've got the air conditioning, 
which I'll show you all later, the EcoFlow air conditioning and the power unit. First thing I need to do is have a brew to get that from the fridge. Be right back. Actually, you know what? Before I get my, my brew out, I need to plug the fridge back in. And to do that, I need the eco float, which is down there. Food bag. This is the beauty of a truck, the drop down bed. Okay, oh look, it's cleared a bit. Look at that. Holy moly. Oh, come on. Wow. See all those? Those green fields? Those aren't fields. Those are vineyards, because this is Marlborough. And that's home of Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc. There's a part, only a tiny part of it, obviously. And Pinot Noir. Isn't it, Brucey? Oh my God, look, you've got all these prickly seeds on you. Come back here, Bruce. Look at all these seeds. Oh, I'll have to pull those off. Oh, I see goats down there. And we don't want Bruce hauling us down the hill there. It's a long way down. Beautiful. So Bruce was up there <laughs> before having a look around. Oh, come on, look at my camp now. You see what I mean about the wind? Can you hear the wind? You see the trees moving all around me? See, look. See, they're all gusting. And yet you come in here. Silence. Silence. Check out my fancy new lightweight. I'm just testing it because I'm going to be taking this at the tops. My lightweight Benro tripod. My new Fenix light that they sent me. What is this? A Fenix CL28R. This is brand new, this thing. It's very heavy. So this is for car camps. And then my whole other rigmarole with my A7R. And this is the new lens, the Tamron 28 to 75. Where was I? Oh, okay. I'm getting distracted. EcoFlow. Uh, so this is the air conditioning unit, the EcoFlow Wave. This is what's going to be keeping us cool tonight. And it's got a, a battery pack on it which with what I need tonight, which is just sort of fan, that's gonna last all night. But this is the big unit. I need to move my seat forward a bit. It's all right, Brucey, I'm not going anywhere without you. I'm not going anywhere without you. He wants to go and play. I'm gonna have to, oh, bumblebee. Uh, okay. So this is my much abused EcoFlow. Colossal Delta uh, Delta Max. This thing's a beast. And I'm going to be using the 12 volt on this to power my fridge. Right, so hang on, how am I going to do this? Oh, you know what? First of all, I've got to unplug it. Oh my God. Look, I haven't planned much. <laughs> Unplug it from the car. It's much dif more difficult doing this for YouTube. Believe me. <laughs> I'm not complaining. I'm just saying. Okay. Right. Power socket. So what we do is plug it in here. Turn it on. Look at that, 100%, awesome. Turn on the 12 volt. There you go, and fridge is back on. I don't know why it's saying 14 degrees C. 
Oh, there goes, it's on. Nice. All right, so a beer. Oh, and look what I got for dinner. Nothing is cooperating. <laughs> okay, for dinner, I've got a couple of pizzas. I've got a meat lover's pizza, barbecue sauce, and a Hawaiian pizza. It's, it's gotta be meat lovers. Okay. Yeah, what do you want? It's not, oh, I see. It's almost your dinner time, isn't it? Well, you see, you're gonna have to wait a bit for dinner because you never really have it that early. So you'll just have to wait. Okay. Right, I think it's time to get back on the big camera. Shut this. Yeah, I can't wait to use this thing tonight, this EcoFlow Wave. Oh, it'll just make everything better. Uh, fridge is on. I wonder how much that's drawing. 40. 40 watts. Temperature seems to be going up. <laughs> I don't know. It does work. I know it does. Hey, look at me, look inside. Look how much room I've got. See, that's a full, that's a proper full pillow and it's got all this space. So I'll probably sleep my head up that end because head above feet. Yeah. Um, and I'll probably just put Bruce in the corner here and we'll have the air con pumping in through the vents. It's got, uh, it's got mosquito mesh up here as well. It's got plenty of venting everywhere. Big vents on the back that I'll open up tonight as well. And it's obviously made for A, B camping. It's not. Right, we put you back on the big camera. Oh, I know, Brucey. I'll tell you what. Oh, look, I've got dirt all over. I'll tell you what, I'll get you some treats. Hold on. Let me just get him some treats, everyone. Hang on. So the great thing about being at altitude, let me check what altitude we're at. Oh, you're such a good boy. Look at you sitting there nicely. I need to get these. Oh, you've got the seeds off. Have you got the seeds off? Let me get that seed off. Hold on, hold on. Oh, no. Oh, look, liver treats. Mmm. Is it pretty? Good boy. Go on then, off you go. <laughs> okay, let me check the altitude. Hold on. All right, Brucey, off you go. Go on, you've had your treat. You'll get your dinner soon. Okay, so we're at... So the peak... In front of me just hit. So the peak behind me is 1,292 meters. And this says we're at 1,251 1, meters, Mount Patriarch. 1,251. Now, I don't know if this is gonna show up in the camera. Let's have a look. You getting anything? So the camera is programmed to, <laughs> it's, it's only programmed to pick up on me. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. It's got facial recognition, and if it can't see me, it doesn't seem to want to do anything. Now Bruce has gone off for a wonder. Yeah, I'm watching you. Okay. Cheers, everybody. What have I got here? Oh. Got an Apollo Hazy IPA, 6% alcohol. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. It's from Renaissance Brewery, which is in Marlborough, so it's local. Oh, Bruce, what's that? What's here? Here. Bruce likes beer. Okay, so we're down. Oh my God, the heat. I'm telling you, in here, <laughs> it's probably five, six, seven degrees warmer in here than it is here. It's crazy. 
Now, what I really like about this setup is if it starts raining, oh, that's blowing all the way over. Hold on, hold on a sec, I need to fix the awning. I think that's because I undid it. Yeah. Okay, that's better. Right, so if it starts raining, coming in, say from up here, then I can just put the poles up, put this tarp up. I've got spare guys, I could guy it up, no problem. Yeah, that would be fine. But as it stands, I don't need to. This is such a superb setup. It really is. All this fit in the truck. You saw how, how pretty much this was so easy to set up. I'm gonna have a nice bone dry place to sleep tonight, place to store everything, keep it all dry. I'm, safety of my truck is right here. Handbrake is on and it's in gear. Yeah, I'm happy. The only breeze I can feel now is under here at my ankles. That's it. If I was to sit back and put my feet up in here, then I wouldn't feel a single thing. Amazing. I'm so happy with this. I really am. <laughs> oh. So it's been a month. It's been a month. And what was it? December 23rd was the last time I posted a video. And it's now January the 30th. Just been busy and I've been relaxing and I was a bit ill, all sorts. Uh, I had a tooth problem, <laughs> I lost a tooth. It cracked where I'd had a crown before. So they've actually taken the tooth out. <coughs> oh, they had to crack it into three places and pull it out. <laughs> I don't want to go through that again. So I've got to get an implant. What a pain, literally. Yeah, I've just been, had so much on um, and I've been desperate to get out and now I am. And I'm gonna probably go out again in another couple of days and do uh, a mountaintop wild camp in what I can only describe as what the forecast is, terrible conditions. We'll see, but it did look pretty grim. Yeah, so that's it really. That's what's been going on. So what I'm gonna do is kick back, enjoy my beer. I might take Bruce for a bit of a walk. The clouds have come in. I was just wondering if there are any sand flies up here, midges, but there's nothing, probably because of the altitude. 1300 meters, yeah, 4,000 feet. There's no uh, mozzies up here. Um, I'll take Bruce for a bit of a wonder. I was gonna put the drone up, but it's, Pretty windy up there and it's the, it's clagged in again. The uh, cloud is coming down again. So yeah, a bit of a wonder and I'll bring you back for his dinner and probably my dinner at the same time. So I'll bring you back. Thanks for coming everybody. Great to be back. Welcome back everybody. Okay, Bruce wants his dinner. So let's get him his dinner. Now I've forgotten his metal bowl. So I'll do it in his water bowl instead. So Bruce gets a combination. Sit Bruce. Be a good boy. Sit Brucey. He gets a combination of his dry diet which I think is Hills Science Diet, yeah. And organic, this one is salmon with sweet potatoes, peas and stuff like that, vegetables. Nude, this stuff is great. Oh my God, he loves this stuff. But you know, Bruce is getting older now, so he gets less food because he just doesn't burn it off otherwise. So when they're pups, they get to a certain point where they plateau with the amount of food they get. So Bruno, who I haven't mentioned at all on this trip yet, little Bruno, here, I'll put a little picture somewhere of him. 
or a little video. Little Bruno gets quite a lot of food. Oh, do you want to lick the packet? No, you just want your food. He's like, no, I want the whole lot. Yeah, so Bruno gets a lot at the moment of his puppy food. Good boy, go on then. Ah, let me bring you in a bit. You're quite a long way away. I'm still getting used to this lens. <laughs> Oops. Which is, there you go. Did you want to see? Oh, I know what you want to see. Hang on, hang on. Let me sort this out. I know. You don't even have to say it. You want to see Bruce. There you go. You can see him now. Okay. I know that's all you want to see. Right, so what I've done is, update. I don't know if you can quite make that out, but I've taken the awning for the tent and I have tied it up. So what that's done is it's really enclosed it in here. It seems like it's quite dark, but it's so bright in front. I mean, my view out is of the, the pine trees and the hills. I mean, when that clears, it should be a spectacular view. Um, so what this has done though is meant that if it does rain, I don't have to deal with it. If it does rain, then I am fully protected now. Um, there's just no way even light rain is gonna get in here. I'm protected from the, the, behind me. Oh, just everything. This is a great setup, it really is. So I've got everything ready up here for dinner. It's not quite my dinner time though. Um, a little bit early for me, but I will have a coffee. Still with a little bit of beer left, but I do want to put a coffee on. Okay, before I do the coffee, let me just put some water in Bruce's bowl. You didn't see me put that out earlier for him, but I did. Mind out, Brucey. Come on. Yeah, coffee time. Bruce, you've just had your dinner. No. Go on, go away. Oh, he's so cheeky. <laughs> coffee, okay, kettle. So I didn't bring my electric kettle this time. Thought I'd go gas. I've got a new kettle. So instead of the Trangia, I don't know what this one is. Maple leaf, I think. I don't know. Anyway, the reason I got this one is it's pretty lightweight. But also, it's got a, a heat exchanger underneath which means it boils really quickly. So I won't put this on full because I just want to prove my point. There, and let's see how long that takes. And I've got some Nescafe hazelnut lattes. Hey, you know what? This little shelf is already proving to be pretty handy. And I didn't bring a rubbish bag because I just forget everything all the time. Ah. <laughs> okay, you know what? Turning the camera around and stuff all the time is gonna be a real pain. Right, let's see how long that takes. I'm sure it won't take too long. Oh, I've just got everything set up just just how I want it it just feels am I in focus I'm probably not even in focus am I I hope I am sorry if I wasn't in focus then again the camera uh I'm still getting used to it it should be fine now once it tracks my face Brucey no just no come and lie down
it's it's so warm. It's warm for him. Too warm. Like tonight, all he's going to sleep on is his towel. Yeah, because he's he'll be on the mattress in here with me. But um, if without that aircon, we'd be stifling in there. I've slept in here before when it was cold outside, oh, and it was just so hot in there. Yeah, for a winter tent, the only downside is it's single wall, so you're gonna get condensation. There's nothing you can do about it. And you do get a lot of condensation in here. So I'm gonna have the doors wide open, have the air, cold air blowing in. Bruce! <coughs> Bruce, go away, come on. Hmm. What are you doing? Do you want to come and lie down? Come and lie down with me, come on. He can smell his dog food in the shelf. Come and lie down. Lie down. Come on, settle. There you go. All right, he's settling down here under the tent. He was under the truck. He likes to be under stuff, either under here or under the truck and then just look out. Okay, so yeah, I've got my gas cooker, my Iwatani. It's very fancy. These are very expensive. But as usual, I'll put a link to pretty much as much as I can in the description um, in case you want to go and buy it. Uh, you know, it's up to you. It's, it's, I try so many different things. Um, and if it's rubbish, then I, I, I'm not going to, put it in the description to be honest I wouldn't advise but like this kettle if it's good I'll put it in the description I tested it at home and it boiled water I think it was twice as fast as a Tranger kettle yeah it was very good um so what was I just saying you know what? I can't remember <clears throat> Sorry, gosh, I've got a tickle in my tummy. In my throat. Oh my god, I'm all over the place. It's the first video for over a month. For what, six weeks? So, <laughs> I'm out of practice with everything. Getting everything set up, I'm out of practice. I do love this setup, I really do. Um, it would be nice if this warning, if I could make it go higher. I guess. If I used the poles, it might be a little bit higher, but they're not very big poles. I think they were only 1.4, 1.5 meters. Um, but then they'd just be in the way anyway. This way, I've got nothing in the way at all. I just can't stand up fully under this. I love having the awning on the truck because it doesn't get in the way at all. And then when you need it, it's there and it's really strong. I don't even have it guide out, but it's really strong and it just gives you options. It really does to sit out underneath it or if it's hot and sunny, you can, you know, shade, if it's raining, it's just brilliant. There's so much about this setup I love. I love the truck with the gull wing windows and my table. I love it all, it's great. I'm rambling. Here's something almost there. Now, the only flaw with this kettle is this thing doesn't stay up. Ah, oh, so yeah. 2023. It came around so quickly. Last year was amazing. But you know what? I'm going to save all that for cigar time. What I want to do now is have my coffee. I can hear it. Oh, here we go. Okay. Whoa, yeah. That's dumb. Coffee time. Oops. Oh, it spills. Oh, I see. No, no, no. I poured it too fast and it's spilling out the top of the lid. Okay. My bad. Just don't pour it so fast. In fact, just turn it round. You know what that was? Was the drainage holes. Yeah, that was silly. That was my fault. Okay, we're good. All right, everyone, I'm gonna have my coffee and I'm gonna bring you back for dinner because I'm just rambling. And I am quite hungry, so it won't be long. So bring you back for dinner.
Welcome back, everybody. Hello, Brucey. You've had your dinner and everything. No, 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 no. Come and lie down. You're being very naughty. He's so cheeky, honestly. He's trying to get second dinners, and second dinners don't happen. Okay, coffee was great. Um, oops. So what I need to do is plug in the uh, plug in the pizza maker. So what you do is you crank it. Plug it back. This is our old school TikTok TikTok. Get my pizza. Meat lovers pizza. That's gotta be the way to go with barbecue sauce and with real mozzarella. Bruce, you're being very, very cheeky. You can't, you guys can't see him. But he is hounding me. He's having some water, okay. But he was he was getting in my face there. Um Pizza, yes. Awesome, I can't wait. So now, that is working. It's drawing a kilowatt on the uh, EcoFlow Max. I need a bottle of wine. What have I got? Stables Natawara 2021 Merlot. Yum. And another thing that I've got that I'm gonna be taking on the top, so I'm gonna test, oops, is this titanium cup. But the difference is it's in, it's double layered. So you don't burn yourself when you when you have a drink from it. And also it keeps your drinks hot if they are hot. Keeps your drinks cold if they're cold. It's a big cup. I'll only fill that half. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Thanks for coming. Mm. I've never had wine from a titanium cup. Nice. Mm. That is nice. Mm. Smooth. Pizza. Oh my God, I'm ready for this. Now, I've got two pizzas because, well, Not particularly big, but actually, I guess it is quite big. <laughs> okay, let's open this. So, light is, it's still quite bright. And don't forget, I say this every time, I think, Southern Hemisphere, New Zealand, we're in the middle of summer. Um, so what, we're in January, end of January, January 30th. So yeah, Ryan, well, yeah, hottest month is coming up. So, you know, but we're on a mountain. So anything can happen on the tops. And this is, yeah, what, 1300 meters, 4,200 4, feet. It's pretty high. So things, all sorts of things happen here. We're in the clouds. Um, There's quite a cool breeze coming through the whole place. So that's, that noise is the, uh, the EcoFlow power bank, just keeping itself cool because of the, the power draw of the pizza oven. So yeah, it's, um, it's, it, it can get boiling hot suddenly. And it's four seasons in one day in New Zealand. Now you've probably heard that Auckland's got all sorts of floods at the moment, it's terrible. Terrible, I mean, they had in one day an entire summer's worth of rain. And if that's not climate change, then I don't know what is. Oh, I'm not saying it's man-made or man-accelerated. I'm just saying it's obvious the climate is changing and we have to adapt to that. Um, I don't know anything about fixing it. I don't know what you can do. I don't know what you can do to slow it down. None of that. I'm just saying we have to adapt. And um, that means building flood defenses, uh, your property's got to be prepared for it. Um, you got to be prepared for the heat. 
the cold, the droughts, and the deluges. That's what I'm saying, that's all. And so yeah, we, we all have to adapt to it. Like on my land, the damage we've had, we saw the storms a year ago that our area had never seen in its whole lifetime. We had uh, 350 millimeters of rain. So that's um, over a meter of rain in 24 hours, uh, which is, uh, I can't, I mean, that much rain in 24 hours, it, you know, you know, absolutely insane. Um, sorry, what am I talking about? Not a meter, what am I talking about, a meter? No, 35 centimeters, sorry, that much rain. Oh, I bet someone was screaming at me there. 35 centimeters, because I just suddenly thought, no, it can't be that much. No, it was that much, because I remember it filled up a bucket and it was, wow, it was actually a bit more. It was like that, but in 24 hours, and of course we lost our entire hillside. It caused all sorts of damage in our area. Roads were washed out. Our region had never seen anything like it uh, in man's lifetime of being there. So yeah, obviously there's climate change. It's happening. We've got to adapt. Uh, Auckland is testament to that. Everything you're seeing in California at the moment is test. Yes. But the light hasn't gone out yet. Hang on. Huh. Why isn't the light going out? I guess the light doesn't go out. Okay. Well, I need it to get up to full temp. And I don't think it's there yet. I'm going to give it another couple of minutes. No, that can't be full temperature. Basically, you're looking for it to sort of start smoking. Then you put it in and you turn it right down to level three. I don't know where you get these pizza ovens now. This is a Davis and Waddle pizza oven. I did find something similar to it on, uh, actually very similar to it, same spec on Amazon. So I'll put a link to it. But these things are a godsend, especially if you're buying pre-made pizza. But if you're just buying the pizza base and making your own pizza, these are so easy to use, really, very quick. So yeah, climate change, it's happening. Get used to it, it's here. Don't have nightmares about it, just deal with it. That's what engineers are for. Uh, that's what the builders are for. This is what the government is meant to be there for. And um, you know, let's all prepare for it. Let's, let's really get prepared because the damage, I mean, Auckland airport was underwater. <laughs> it was like that much water in the check-in terminal. So they canceled all the flights. Oh, I saw that with some poor flight. Um, so the longest flight I think at the moment is Dubai to uh, Auckland, which is a 16 hour flight, 17 hour flight. It's a long flight. Anyway, they had to, uh, they had to turn around because Auckland airport suddenly closed. And I think they got seven hours into the flight. Imagine that seven hours into the flight. And then you're told the captain comes on the, on the intercom and says, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, Auckland airport is closed. There's nowhere else to land. We don't have any ground crew anywhere else in New Zealand. We can only land at Auckland airport. Um, so we're turning around 14 hours in the air to turn around. And I think a similar flight happened from the, uh, the Houston flight, Texas flight. I think it did the same thing. They didn't get as far, but it was still pretty bad. Okay, we're smoking. Woo! Okay. Here we go. Pizza time. Oh yeah. Turn that down to three. Four minutes. Okay. Looking good. Got my chopping board, got my pizza chopper here. This thing's so sharp. Hey, hey, happy days. Ah, oh, how? I can see my breath. I don't know why. It's, uh, it's not that cold. You know what? I've actually got a thermometer. Hold on. Where's my thermometer? Here it is. 
Huh, 15 degrees. 84% humidity, 15 degrees and 84% humidity. I mean, it's so humid. I wanna put this in here just to see what the temperature is in the tent because it, it just feels so much warmer in there. It might just be that there's no breeze, you know. Oh, I'm so excited, I'm so excited. I'm looking forward to cigar time. I don't know if you heard that bird, that's the bell bird. I get a lot of comments about the bell birds. They are beautiful sounding things. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to cigar time. I've got so many things I need to talk about. Um, but cigar time with a bottle of wine, can't go wrong. My last camp was in the um, air tent, the Zempire air tent. I loved that thing. That was an epic tent. But here's the thing, it's huge. Huge, really is. So I'll only be using that um, where I know the campsite. Yeah, if I don't know the site that I'm going to, I can't take that. It's so big that I can't assume that I'd be able to uh, use it. So, you know, I am looking now, actually I've ordered, an Oz tent air tent, which is smaller. So that will probably be the next car camp tent I test is the Oz tent air tent. Um, I, I do have a lot of tents. I buy all my tents, by the way. I buy all the gear unless I tell you. Like the EcoFlow stuff, obviously I don't buy that. They sponsor the video, so, you know. Um, but I buy everything else, absolutely everything. And these tents are so expensive, these Oz tents Oz tent tents are ridiculously expensive. They've got to be the most expensive tents for what you get. But it's because of all the, the, the aluminium frames and stuff like that and the super thick materials. Oh, it's steaming. It's steaming. Oh, Christ. It's dumb. Wow. It's dumb. Okay. Let's shut off the ace. AC. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, that looks good. I need to show you. Let me pick up the camera and show you. See if this works. Oh, oh I've got the umbrella on it. Now I'm regretting setting the awning up because I can't see anything. Look at that. Yum. Oh, Meat lovers pizza, come on. What's not to like? Right, let me fix the camera now that I've done that. There you go. Right, so I need to transfer this onto the chopping board. And Crunchy base, crispy base. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Where's my wine? Oh, I need to top that up. Sorry, I'm just, I can't stop talking because I'm so excited. Now I might actually just put this on to keep this hot. I might put some of these pieces back on because I don't want a cold pizza. Okay, here we go. Bon appetit everybody. Mmm, yep. Mm-hmm. Hot. Very hot. Ow. Oh, it's so good. Mmm.
doesn't get any better. Every time I think I can't, every time I think I can't surpass a camp in terms of comfort, food, you know, the combination of everything, I surprise myself. My last camp in that air tent, definitely the ultimate, the ultimate in comfort and everything. But that was a campsite. I'm oh, sorry, I'm such a slob. That was a campsite. This is wild. This I'm I am way out. Like, I mean, yes, this is a road, but it's not a proper road. I haven't seen a single car. Ah, hot. Oh. Wow. That was stupid. <laughs> the bottom of that was on fire. I just made a really giggly noise. Ow. How can that... God. Yeah, so I just feel like I'm very remote right now. Hopefully I can put the drone up in the morning and you can see what I'm talking about. Mm. Okay, everyone. <laughs> I'm gonna enjoy the rest of my pizza. Mm. I can't stop. I can't stop eating. I'm gonna enjoy the rest of my pizza and then bring you back. For cigar time. Thanks again, everyone, for coming. I love this cup, by the way. Boundless Voyage. 450 mil titanium. I'll be using this all the time now. I wonder if I can get my logo lasered in, stenciled in. I don't know what you can do on titanium. Might have to try that. Would anyone be interested in that? An AB Camping Titanium Insulated Mug for winter and summer use? Let me know in the comments. All right, everyone, I'll bring you back for cigar time. Ah, I've done it again. God, that's hot. Whew. I've got to stop making that girly noise. Welcome back everybody, just before cigar time, just wanna show you this evening that we're having here. It is absolutely spectacular. Check this out.
Hey, Brucey. Bruce. You ready for cigar time? I think he is. It is just breathtakingly beautiful up here. It's my setup. So the sun is setting there. In the west, it'll rise over there in the east. So I'm gonna get the sun on my spot in the morning. We've got all these bellbirds. I don't know if you can see them. There's about six of them. You'll see some birds flussing around, flittering. Those are bellbirds and they're all singing to each other. Loads of them. They've only just turned up, but they're all having a good chat. That's why I'm just sitting on the branch there. And look, the valley on the other side is clear now. Look at that. Look at those peaks. It's Mount Patriarch. Look at this. There's just no one around. You can see the road up there. It just cuts around the corner. Can you imagine what this is like in winter? Covered in ice and snow. Be lethal but beautiful. I've got to come back up here in winter, do a camp, because we are, our elevation is so high for here, for Marlborough. To, well, for New Zealand to get a truck up, to get a car up. Oh, wow, how did I miss that? There's Lake Chalice. <laughs> I didn't even notice, because I hadn't come around this corner, and it was covered in, in fog so I camped down at the river mouth just there that was a few camps ago Lake Chalice oh god it's just so beautiful come on Brucey this is a bit of a treat having a bit of a walk before cigar time because it's summer it's lighter, later. Oof. Not going all the way up there. Hey, what's over here? Might see some goats or a chamois. I just heard something. I can hear some sort of animal down there. There's the road. Ah, there's my camp. Hang on, I've got to be very careful because I've had some wine. I'm standing on the edge of a cliff here. <laughs> so, no Bruce. So I don't know if you can just see the truck. My camp over there. Can you see that? Yeah, this is a sheer drop. No, Bruce, don't go to the edge, please. This is a sheer drop. Wow. Oh my God. I just feel alive. So my truck is just there. Let's camp on that corner. And Bruce absolutely loves it here. So this goes on another seven kilometers uh, before it drops down to the valley on the other side and then it's like another 45 kilometers, it's a long way. We won't be doing that. Yeah, I'd like to come up here in winter. I think it would be spectacular. 
Just got to time it for when there's some snow. Have lots of gear. Pack for a multi-day trip. There's a total fire ban here at the moment because we're in summer. Not that you need a fire, but just not allowed at the moment. Look at the lake. Not a sound, no. Just nature. Remember, New Zealand just has a population of 5 million people. And on the South Island here, there's only half a million people. And New Zealand is the size of the UK. Actually, it's the size of Japan, which has, Japan has what, 120 million people? That's how remote everywhere is in New Zealand. It's just no one around. And they like to keep it that way. And there's my setup. I'm going to have a lovely sunrise, hopefully. With my view out. I mean, my view at the moment, the evening, I just have to bring my chair around to this side. But my view out will be that. In fact, this will be my view. Trees, valley, sun. And then I'll see the sun hitting those tops. Can't wait. All right, everybody, I've bored you enough with my little walk around tour of camp. See Brucey? Bring you back for scar time. Welcome back, everybody. Hello, Brucey. Oh, you've got, you got seeds on you everywhere. I know, let me get them off. Oh. Welcome back to Cigar Time. That dinner was epic. Now come on Bruce, you've had, you've had everything. You've had treats, you've had dinner, you've had lots of stuff. Come on now, stop hassling me. No, 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 I know, it's just because I've started talking to the camera and you're freaking out a bit. Cigar Time, okay, Bruce, enough. <laughs> he tries it on. It's like he, he, it's like he knows you're watching and that he thinks he can guilt me into something. Even though he's had treats and everything, dinner, the works. So I'm gonna have a hot chocolate uh, and finish this wine. It's a beautiful evening. As you saw from the GoPro footage. It's a little bit chilly. Um, so I, I've put the thermometer in the tent and closed the doors. Last I checked, it was 17 degrees centigrade, but it was 85% humidity. So in there, especially with me and Bruce, it's gonna be stifling, so yeah. Thank God for the, uh, the air con um, that I'm running the EcoFlow. So, cigar time. Let's get a cigar out. We're gonna go with a Monte Cristo number four. One of my favorites. Thank you, uh, Christine, for the cigar box. I've got a little bit of a tickle in my throat. Don't know where that came from. I think I overdid it in the gym this morning. So, a lot to talk about. A lot to talk about.
Now, a hunter did go past, a couple of hunters, a couple of hours ago. And they're going to come back again at some point, probably when it's dark. I haven't heard any shots. So assuming they haven't got anything. But I'll pause the camera when they come past in case there's a little bit of a gap. So let's do cigar time. What are we gonna talk about? If this is your first time watching uh, one of my videos, I do this on every video. I've done it for over a year. I love my cigars and I have a cigar just when I'm camping, it's my treat. And I like to have a little chit chat at camp. Mm. So 2023, it's gonna be a great year, positive year, I'm determined. Um, going to enjoy it. And here's the thing with 2023. So as the channel has got bigger, sorry, I'm trying to sort that. As the channel has got bigger, it's attracted a lot of people. We're at what, 155, 156,000 subscribers now. But the videos get way more views than that. So my last video is at, what, I don't know, almost 500,000. Um, we get a lot of videos in the millions now. And um, honestly, it's superb. I, I love you guys for that. It's fantastic. It's great to have you all on board. You don't all subscribe. And I, I can understand that. It's, it's complicated sometimes, especially if you're a bit older or you don't know the tech. How do you subscribe? How do you like a video, the thumbs up? Not everybody knows these things. Um, and because they're not subscribed, they also don't know how to go and look at my channel to find the videos. They're all out of date. They don't know when videos are coming out. They're like, how did I miss this one? So YouTube doesn't make it easy. It really doesn't. But it also means that a teeny tiny percentage, because the videos are going out to so many millions of people now, there's a tiny percentage, and I mean 0 0.0001, maybe less than that percent, of trolls either trolls or just people that don't like me or don't like the channel, don't like Bruce, don't like the concept, don't like three hour videos. And this teeny, teeny, tiny percentage of people can't help themselves but write nasty comments or demeaning comments or saying, I'm out of here or I don't like this, blah, 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 blah. But they have to complain or they have to be nasty. And it makes them feel good. Yeah, that's the only reason they do it, is it makes them feel good that they've had a crack at me. So I've, I've worked on this over the year and I've had to think about it and how to deal with it. Because um, there are some nasty people out there. You, don't, you all don't see it. But I'm the one that gets the messages. And I'm, I am talking about such a tiny percentage, but they stand out because they're so just... People wouldn't treat you like that if you met them in the street, in the pub or whatever. They just wouldn't. They wouldn't, they wouldn't treat you like that. But because they're, it's anonymous, they feel they can treat you any way they want. And no repercussions, and they get a kick out of it. So I've been talking to a lot of other YouTubers and I've finally worked out exactly what to do. Because I was even tempted to cancel and stop comments. Uh, also, that was to stop the scammers. Yeah. But no, with the scammers, what I've decided to do is I will persevere and report them and hope YouTube gets on top of the situation. As for trolls or people writing nasty comments, I'm assuming they never want to watch any of my videos ever again, so I just block them. So I'm just hiding them now. And to be honest, I don't even get past the first couple of lines. I can tell immediately if it's, if it's, if it's someone that I feel that just doesn't want to watch anymore or doesn't like me or doesn't like Bruce or doesn't like the channel or doesn't like three hour videos, anything like that, I just hide it. And once I hide that user, they're hidden forever. I don't undo it. Um, I don't want to do it, but I just don't see why they should be there. Clustering up what is a really lovely comment section that people like to read. Why would you want to read negativity? You don't. Nobody wants to read that stuff. Nobody I want on there wants to read that stuff. Vindictive stuff. So I just hide them and they're gone forever. They don't know they're gone. They don't know they're blocked. They don't. And they'll never know. 
Uh, there's no way for them to find out whatsoever. So um, yeah, that's what I'm doing from now on. And it makes me feel much better. I just see it, I go, goodbye, gone, move on. And then just look at the next hundred brilliant comments, lovely people, fantastic to talk to, like-minded. And that's what this is all about, like-minded. So that's what I'm gonna do this year. Keep positive, just get rid of those trolls. Don't let any negativity into the chat, into the comments area, because I know people like to read them. Uh, my family likes to read them. So I want to keep it clean, keep them out and keep it positive. So they're gone forever. There's no undos. Um, I wanted to thank everybody that's contributed to the channel. Everyone who's gone to buy me a coffee and bought a coffee, uh, bought treats for Bruce or bought treats for me. Everyone who's bought merch. Keep on, keep calm, carry on camping or the logo or whatever. I'm working on some new merch this year with a different provider, but we'll, we'll, I'll announce that close to the time. Um, all of our YouTube members, so people who have clicked the join button and paid to join uh, to just show their appreciation for the channel. Thank you very much to all of them. Now, I, can't, I don't know if you can tell, but there is a fog coming straight across the camera. I don't know what you're picking up, but it's literally, we're in a cloud right now and it's blowing right across the camera. It's pretty creepy. And all the Patreon members, thank you very much. Thank you to all of you. Because um, it really, really helps. It's very expensive doing these things. Very expensive. The amount of fuel I burnt through climbing up here, uh, the amount all the gear costs, and I do spend my own money on this gear uh, to test it, to report back. Um, it all adds up. It does. Even though we get sp sponsored videos to sponsored videos, they only take up a small portion. You ask any small YouTuber. Yeah, it's quite difficult. So thank you very much. It's much appreciated. Love you guys. Um, you have no idea how much it means. Um, when I see the comments that come with it as well, uh, with Buy Me A Coffee, I see the comments, uh, the comments that I get from YouTube members. Um, it's a shame I can't get comments from people who buy merch. Um, I don't know anything about the people who buy merch. Unfortunately, I don't get to see their names or anything. So if you bought merch, hey, go on our Instagram or Facebook and send me a picture of you in the merch. That would be fantastic. I'd love that. I'd love to see it. I'd love to put a face to a purchase of merch. I really would. But yes, thank you very much. Um, what next? Ah, the holiday meet and greets which ties me into the mailing list as well. Oh, here come the hunters. I'm gonna switch this off. See how they got on. I'll come straight back to you. Uh, welcome back everybody. Okay, those guys are gone. Uh, they didn't have any luck. They were trying to cull uh, goats. Goats are a big problem here, especially after COVID when no one was hunting, no one was culling. Uh, so everything here with four legs is basically, that's in the wild is basically a pest and not native species introduced back in the uh, 1800s. So deer, pigs, goats, chamois, everything, nightmare. And they run amok because there's no predators. Mm. So my hot chocolate's ready, but it's scorching hot. So I'm gonna drink wine. Cheers, everybody. So yes, there was a holiday meet and greets and mailing list. So as, um, as if, if, you're, if you're new to this channel, uh, my wife and I uh, will be coming to um, the UK, Spain, and Singapore, and the US in end of, uh, end of March, April and May. And uh, what we'll do is we'll meet up with people while we're there. I'll, I'll make an announcement the day before that we're gonna be at this particular bar, but a few days before, maybe a week before, I'll announce what city we're gonna be in when. And I'll do that by the email list. And I think we've got a thousand people on the email list already. So uh, I'll put a link in the description. This is something that I can't do. You'll have to do it. You have to click on the link, go to our website and key in your email address and join a subscribe 
It costs you nothing. And uh, that's how I'll communicate where we're going to be. Other than that, that list will only be used to communicate that a new video has come out. I won't spam you with anything else. That's all it's going to be. So it's going to be for meet and greets and for new videos coming out. So if you're interested in that, and I hope you are, and we're looking forward to meeting people, we really are. Um, those cities that we're going to be in, I think in the US, it's going to be uh, New York, uh, LA, and Las Vegas. Unfortunately, this is just the timing that we could do. This was the only timing we could do. We couldn't visit any other cities in between. We'll do that another time. Uh, in the UK, I think it's going to be something like uh, London, maybe somewhere near South End in Essex, um, and maybe up north, Ormskirk or Manchester, somewhere around there. Not 100% sure. Maybe Devon. I don't know. In Singapore, it's just Singapore. Um, and... Um, is that where we're staying? I think that is. Yeah. So anyway, I will let you know. And please sign up. It will be fantastic. And also just sign up anyway, just so you know when videos come out straight away. Because YouTube staggers the release of notifications of when videos come out. So you don't always know straight away when they're coming out. It's a very smooth cigar. Monte Cristo number four. What's next? Oh. <sighs> okay. I made a New Year's resolution. I said, I will see how long I can go without looking at politics. So no, no political stuff, no news. <sighs> oh, it lasted like 48 hours of that. Honestly, it just didn't happen. My brain isn't wired that way. I have to know. I have to know what's going on. I can't help myself. And I really don't want to talk about politics. I really don't. But I've got to say, Jacinda Ardern, who was the Prime Minister of New Zealand and saw the country through some horrible events, uh, she's gone. She quit. Now, it doesn't matter what you think of her. It doesn't matter what you think you know overseas. It really doesn't matter what you think you know Unless you live in New Zealand, you can't fathom what was going on here with her. You just can't, unless you were here. And you'll only ever hear one side. Overseas, you'll only ever hear, because of the spin, um, you'll only ever hear she was a fantastic, warm, loving human being, an amazing prime minister, and that everyone loved her and that New Zealanders loved her. That's all you'll ever hear. And I'm afraid the truth couldn't be further from that. It doesn't matter. I'm going to get some hate here because there will be some people that absolutely love her, but it doesn't matter. The majority didn't. So her poll numbers were in the floor and this was nothing to do with hate, bigotry, misogyny, or anything else. It doesn't matter that she was a female, the prime minister before his numbers, John Key, were in the same position when he quit as well. They quit because they know they're going to lose the next election. So everything she touched, everything that Jacinda Ardern touched, she broke. And everything she promised failed. She didn't deliver on a single campaign promise, not one. You wouldn't know this overseas, but this is what happened in New Zealand. Uh, she even put herself in charge of child poverty and fixing the child poverty situation, it got even worse with her in charge. Um, she put herself uh, in charge and committed to housing and building this, this thing called Kiwi Build. It failed, collapsed, completely collapsed. In fact, lost millions. It didn't work. Absolute failure. Abject failure. Taxation failed. Defense system failed. It was crisis after crisis with her, honestly. It was a disaster. Her and her government, absolutely useless. So she's gone. Good riddance, honestly. Um, I don't care about the lovey-dovey, huggy stuff. That doesn't help. It doesn't help the country. New Zealand needed help and still does. It's in a dire situation. doesn't matter what you, th what you think you know or what you've heard. Poverty here is terrible. It really is. The rich-poor divide is absolutely terrible here. And it's getting worse. And the crime rate has gone through the roof. It, 
there are suburbs now where if you own a little shop, a dairy that stays open until late at night, you just pray you're not going to get ram raided that night. It's that bad. Stabbings, everything. Crime rate. It's gone ballistic. So don't believe the hype, please. It, it's, it's, it's all rubbish. It's all BS. Don't believe it. It, it was all spin. The new prime minister, who was the minister of education and police under her, I think, and also the COVID minister, he looks like he's about 12 years old. He's never had a job a day in his life. He's, he's a career MP, a career politician, and he is useless. It's like you hit him with something hard, it's like a deer in the headlights. And I guarantee you this, just the same way I guaranteed about Jacinda Ardern, it's going to be a disaster with him in charge. Yeah. You know why? Because he's never worked. He has no idea. He doesn't know what a hard day's work is. He doesn't. He doesn't know what it's like to have to bring, you know, income in and not be fired. The risk of being fired, the risk of losing your job, your house. So, anyway, whatever. That's New Zealand politics. It's a mess. Terrible. Ah, so something else that happened. <laughs> a viewer. Oh, and I can't remember her name. Oh no, that sounds so bad. Oh, what was her name? It's on Facebook anyway. And I haven't heard from her, so I don't know that she knows that I posted it. But she put, <sighs> sorry, got a blowfly. Um, she posted a picture and sent it to me. I've got to look up her name now, haven't I? Hold on one second. Let me just look up her name because it, it was so funny. Uh, where is it? Here we go. Um, Roseanne, there you go. Roseanne on Facebook, it was. So Roseanne sent me a picture of a bingo card, an AB camping bingo card that she'd made. And it was hilarious, honestly. Clearly, I am so transparent um, and so obvious, and I, mu I must telegraph, but um, a whole load of phrases. Now, clearly, you can't fit everything into one bingo card that I apparently say, because a lot of people have responded. Hundreds of people have responded, well, what about this? What about this? And the biggest one that was they, I think, all agreed on that was missing was, it's grim. Yeah, it's grim. And I haven't had to use it on this one because it's stunning. I guarantee my next camp it's going to be grim. Anyway, the bingo card. So if you're playing bingo right now, because I saw a lot of comments saying that you were getting ready to play bingo, uh, good luck to you. I hope you do well. It even made me wonder, should I produce uh, an online bingo uh, and just release it the day before um, videos so that people can download the bingo card and play it? And it's just at random. If they get bingo, they get bingo. You won't win anything, but maybe make it a bit more entertaining. If that's something you'd like, then let me know, and I'm sure I can work it out. YouTube. Uh, a lot of things are happening in YouTube. Bruce. Oh, he's going to take the tent down. A lot of things are happening in YouTube. The biggest thing that's happening is monetization of shorts. Now, this probably means nothing to anybody. But YouTube is def desperate to compete with TikTok, really, really desperate. It hates TikTok and, it, you know, it really wants to get in that space of very, very, very short videos. I think the average attention span on TikTok is less than 10 seconds, which is really scary. Um, so, you know, videos that are 10 to 20 seconds long and YouTube is pushing these. Like even 60 seconds is too long on, it, on a short video. And so it's monetizing them. So now from February, YouTubers will make money from shorts. And it seems like a very, very easy way to make money is just flood YouTube with short videos. You know, they're in portrait mode, not landscape mode, so they don't fit on the TV properly. And they're just really, really short with, you know, bang, 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 bang. That's it, and that's your video, and you move on to the next one. Brucey, anyway. To the point, I'd say threatened is the wrong word, but the rumor is out or we've been told that if you don't do shorts, then your channel is going to be penalized. 
and I know that Sean at Corporal's Corner has been talking about it and the fact that he's going to have to produce a couple of shorts a week or whatever. So, you know, I've thought long and hard about this and it's just not me. It's not what I want to do. I don't want to make a whole load of shorts. I'm not looking for that audience. I don't want that audience. I don't want the people that can only look at 10, 15 seconds, 30 seconds of video and then move on to the next subject. That's not me. It's not what I'm about. And um, I'm quite principled. And I'm, I, I'm not going to adapt to that. That's not what I got on here to do. I got on here to do real-time footage, long feature videos of reality, what it's like to camp. Now, would I be tempted to later do 5 to 10, 15, 20-minute videos? Yes, I, I would, of vlogging, yes, but not shorts, not 10 seconds, 30 seconds, no. 60, even 60 seconds, no, it's just not me. I posted a couple to try it, because again, we were threatened that our channels would suffer if we didn't do it. And I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I, I felt I was selling out. So no, I'm not doing them. Um, if YouTube punished this channel because I'm not producing shorts, then clearly I don't want to be on YouTube anymore. It's not for me. And uh, I'll just stop. Move on to Rumble. I don't know. Do something else. But I, I'm not going to succumb to that. Um, I might do shorter videos this year, vlogging, especially my trips overseas or other things. Um, but yeah, not shorts. So just letting you know, it's not something I want to do. And um, if that is appealing to you, then I'm sure there'll be a million other channels doing tons and tons and tons of them. You dumb? Yep. Okay, moving on. Um, fitness and training. So, this time last year, I said I was going to get my six pack back. Got mocked by a couple of people, a couple of guys uh, from the UK. Pretty nasty comments. Like, no chance. Anyway, I'm almost there. Literally a few weeks away from there. So, this was for my own, not vanity, uh, health reasons, you know? I wanted to be able to do this a long time. I want to be able to climb up mountains for a long time. And I know that any excess body fat holds you back, slows you down, is a, is a strain on your knees, all your joints. So that's why I'm doing it. So uh, yes, you'll see that I'm losing weight, but I'm I'm training hard fitness wise doing a lot of weights doing a lot of cardio uh controlling my diet so yes i'm losing uh what looks like weight i'm losing body fat don't be concerned please i get these these messages saying oh you look like you've lost so much weight are you ill it's nothing to do with that i'm just training hard yeah i'm trying to get single digit body fat right down uh then bring it back up to a healthy level and maintain and that's what I want to do, because I want to be able to hike those tops. I want to be able to get out and about and be healthy. That's it, period. So I'm getting there. It's my goal is my target. I really want to get there. I'm trying hard. I'm training hard. I'm working hard. It's hard work. Yeah. Mm. Now, one more thing. Brucey. Bruce. Bruce. Oh my God. So this year I'm gonna do some different stuff. Now, I, I like doing the gourmet stuff. I like cooking proper food when camping. I really do. I love it. But it's not practical. Lugging that amount of gear, so that sort of food, all the cooking equipment required, lugging that amount of gear onto mountains is not practical over the long term. It's, again, it's about this fitness, but it's about this weight on your joints. Um, it's hard work. It really is. So I want to try and do a lot more camps this year where I um, eat, not necessarily freeze-dried, but MRE-style food, meals ready to eat, soldier food. 
Now, when I was training, when I was um, training to be in the Air Force, we had MREs and uh, they were awful. <laughs> they really were, but they were calorie packed and you got through it because of that. You never, you never, like I never felt hungry. It just wasn't good food, but now it's good food. So I've got my hands on some MREs, US, French, uh, New Zealand, and my own sort of mix up. So I'm gonna do a lot more MRE camps this year uh, with fa flameless FRHs, so flameless ration heaters, where you just put the bag and it heats it up. I've got a feeling these are a lot more practical for most people out there when doing wild camping. Freeze-dried meals can be absolutely awful. There are a few that are good, but they're very rare. But the MREs is not freeze-dried. They're heavy-ish, but you don't need as much cooking material, you don't need as much time, therefore no fuel. So lighter. Um, so I think it'd be a lot more practical so I want to give it a go. So this year you're going to see quite a few more MRE camps where I live basically just on MREs and um, everything that comes in those military packs. Yeah, or civilian packs, it doesn't matter. Um, but you're going to see a lot more of that. Also, you're going to see a lot more ultralight gear. So ultralight backpack, tent, tarp, that sort of stuff, chair. Still having the luxuries, but going as light as possible. Now the downside is ultralight gear, good ultralight gear is ridiculously expensive as I've just found out. So I've just bought a whole load of stuff. You're gonna see it on the next camp. Oh my God, it was so expensive. I I'm talking, oh. but you're talking about a couple of grand, a couple of thousand for ultra light for a normal night out. Yeah, for a normal camp. It's expensive stuff, really expensive. I was really surprised. But you've got to try these things. I want to see what difference it makes. I want to see if it makes it any easier for me to get up the tops, incentivizes me to do it to, and to venture into much more beautiful spots further afield. Um, yeah, I want to give that a go. So you're going to see a lot more of that. You're going to see a lot of new stuff, not changes you're still going to see a lot of the old stuff as well old school uh me carrying 25 kilos up a mountain or into remote areas you're going to see a lot of this stuff car camping things you're familiar with but i just want to throw some new things in there as well because there are so many aspects to the outdoors so many aspects to camping and i'd like to do something for everybody and also show people that are afraid of doing some things that you can do it and maybe they just want to see, some people want to see, you know, maybe they can't go camping at all. And some of you just want to see what all the sorts of different types of camping are. So I'm going to do as much of that as possible. Everything. Throw everything in there. Mm. And I guess yeah, that wasn't really the final point. I guess the absolute final point is um, I'm always going to talk. <laughs> I'm not going to do silent videos. It's not me. Um, there are so many silent ASMR videos out there. And I don't know if you've noticed, but camping videos, there are so many coming from Indonesia, Vietnam, all over Asia, Australia, US, just where they don't say a word and they just camp and put subtitles on. That's just not my style. Great for them. Hey, go for it. You'll go viral. You'll get millions of views, I'm sure. It's a very popular segment. It really is. People seem to like that stuff, the ASMR stuff, the not talking. It's just not me. It's not my thing. I like to talk. I like to chat. I like to get to know people, or I like them to get to know me. Um, yeah, the thought of just putting out a silent video to me isn't isn't just isn't interesting so there are loads of them, millions of them out there so please if that's what you came here looking for and you're disappointed because i'm yap 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 yapping or you you write that i talk too much hey this just isn't for you that's all right it's okay you know it's the, 
There's a wide variety on YouTube I'm not gonna change. So you can go and find those ones and that's what you need. For those of you that love the talking, love the chit chat, makes you feel like you're camping with me, this is for you. And I hope you enjoy it. All right, everybody, my uh, hot chocolate is still piping hot. Bruce is going ballistic. Now, if you're wondering, if this is the first time you watched, well, here comes the bingo card comment again. If you're wondering what's going on with Bruce, why he's going so ballistic, it's because the light is on on the camera and the lights are on. I've got all the lights on around and it's triggered him and he's triggered by the light and he's just going nuts. That's what he does. He always has. Okay. Right. I'm going to enjoy my cigar the rest of this evening. It's now getting dark. I'll bring you all back for bedtime. Thanks again, everyone. Thanks for coming. See you at bedtime. Oh, welcome back everybody to bedtime. I'm all tucked in. I've got Bruce down here hogging <laughs> hogging a lot of space. Aren't you Brucey? Uh -huh. Oh, this is the uh I've got the air conditioning running. Because it is hot in here. What I need to do is so I've got it running on fan mode. What I'll do is I'll I'll superimpose the app, hopefully. If I can find the EcoFlow Wave, there it is. Okay, oh, let me unplug my phone. So, I'll superimpose it. I'm running it here. Uh, so you can see what I'm talking about. I've got it set on low fan at the moment the lowest fan. I don't need it on aircon, but it is blowing and you can probably hear it. So it's running outside, but the app allows me to control it in the tent. I don't need the aircon on, um, but running the way it is just on fan, it's gonna run for 55 hours. <laughs> Loads of time as you can see. Oh, actually, Sorry, at this rate, it will run for four days. Bruce, could you take up any more room if you tried? Four days, it'll run according to the app because I'm just running it on fan mode because that's enough just to keep the air circulating. Oh, it's nice because it was hot in here. It was really hot. Um, it's a powerful unit, yeah. If you, if you really crank it, I don't, I'm just running it on its battery that comes with it. It'll run for three hours at full pelt on aircon mode. Um, eight hours if you alternate it aircon on, off, on, off on the auto timer mode. But it's an amazing piece of kit, as you can see. And then in here I've got, let me just turn off the, uh, the app here, the screen recording. And then here, I've got my EcoFlow also. This is the River Max. And it was charging my phone, which I need to plug back in again now. But it's got like 600 watt surge. It's got AC power. So if you see, it's got four USB sockets. It's got a USB-C and three USB-As. It's got a 12 volt socket here, which I could run the fridge off if I wanted to. And it's got a light, which can light everything up. And then on the side here, it's got the AC panels. So there's two AC sockets here. It's a total 600 watts, 1200 watt surge. So this is the River Max that I've got here. So it's got the battery built in, the extended battery. You can get a River Pro as well. But so on the road, 
these things crucial you need a powerful battery bank with all these features and you can charge this thing on solar as well it's got solar input on the other side um, if I turn it around you'll see so this is how you charge it up plug the power in here it's fast charge that takes 500 watt and then you've got the solar charger here so you could plug a couple of solar panels in here if you wanted to charge it by solar very powerful features very powerful system charges all my gear up and the combine that and I've got the wave running here which is just incredible oh I can't tell you how much I need that listen to that lovely fresh air from outside and if I did have that cranked on aircon air con mode oh it would be freezing in here in no time that thing gets so cold it's amazing for those scorching hot summers or just even if you're uncomfortable in fact Brandon used this EcoFlow wave unit in his bedroom during the height of the summer when he was staying at home a couple of days ago a week ago just to cool his room down oh it was lovely in there it really was did a great job so we're all tucked in. Bruce is, well, Bruce is just doing Bruce. He's cleaning himself, preening. He is taking up a lot of room. Bruce, Bruce. He heard a possum, so he's a bit scared. Oh, I said the word possum. So he's quite scared. It's a cozy little space. I've got the venting open here and I've got the vents open at the top. Um, we've got plenty of room though. It's a, this is, it's a big space. It is a big space actually. I wouldn't want two people in here, no way. But for just me and Bruce, it's perfect. Except for him kicking around all over the place, cleaning himself, which takes half an hour to do. Uh, I've got my ouch pouch in here, brushed my teeth. I've got my, so I've got my toothbrush gear in here. So I use these um, toothpaste tablets. And I keep them in a little tin in here, my toothbrush. I don't use toothpaste when I'm on the road like this when I'm camping, use the little toothpaste tablets. Because in winter they don't freeze, they're just very convenient, no mess at all. Leaves your mouth, and I've got the fluorated ones, really fresh. Got my water bottle, got my pee bottle. Look, you always have a pee bottle, okay? Believe me, you don't want to be getting up and going out and going for a pee, especially when it's raining. You don't want to be doing that. Right, it's been loads of fun, everyone. Hopefully I have a nice relaxing sleep with uh nothing happening but if something does happen in the middle of the night i'll come back to you all right everyone see you in the morning good night good night brucey bruce good night sweet dreams can you stop hogging all the bed space night 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 everybody Morning. Oh. Morning. Yes, that's the aircon. Come on, lay down. Come here. Morning. Morning. Oh, I know. I'm happy. I'm happy to be camping. Morning, everybody. Top camera. Oops, sorry. I just pressed stop. <laughs> oh, gosh. Thank goodness for the, uh, the aircon. <laughs> this thing. I've had it on low fan mode with occasional aircon blasts but it was stifling in here otherwise this thing's kept it nice and cool bruce has been sleeping with his head <laughs> resting against it he loves it oh, he loves the breeze right i've got to let brucey out he's desperate to go and pee pee so let me let him out hang on brucey Bruce, hold on. Come on then. Oh. And I've got to get up, get coffee on. Oh, oh, oh it's fog. I keep hitting the off button.
Oh, that was great. Oh, it's a bit foggy. But lovely. Oh, seeing the crime. Empty bottle of wine. Right. I'll get up, bring you back for coffee. Hi, hey, Brucey. Yeah, B. You ready for your breakfast? Oh, yes. He's ready for his breakfast. Okay, let me sort Bruce's breakfast out. Right. Shut everything off. This thing was amazing. Gotta say, I think we would have been drenched in there with condensation if it hadn't been for this. Because there is just, doesn't seem to be a way to avoid condensation in this tent. You can open every flap and it's still, it's still just awful inside. So what I might do to let some more light in here, because obviously it's not raining. I'm going to undo the tarp on the tent and just stow it away. Because it'll be a bit brighter. There's no sunrise or sun basically because it's just so foggy. Over it's overcast. It's already better, isn't it, Brucey? Wow, lots of condensation though on this big tarp on the awning. Yeah, lots of condensation. I don't think that's gonna dry anytime soon, so I'll have to deal with that when I get home. Unwrap it all again. Now there might have been a couple of drops of rain. Maybe. Okay. Breakfast. Right, Bruce wants his breakfast desperately. <laughs> I know you do. I know you do. Just hang on, let me find it. It's one half. Right, just need to empty your bowl. Excuse the arse shot. Okay, hang on, Brucey. Hold on, hold on. I know you're very happy. Hold on, can you sit down, please? Thank you. Can you just wait, wait, sit down. I know you're desperate for, wait. He's desperate for his breakfast. There you go. Ah. There's a couple of blow flies around, but nothing too bad. Okay, I need coffee urgently. It is a peaceful morning though, I have to say. It's, even though it's not sunny, it is beautiful out there. What I'll do is, um, when I'm ready, when I'm packing up, yeah, when I'm packing up, I'll put the drone up. And then you'll, you'll see what it's like. Coffee time. So, camp last night. 
Actually, let me just zoom you in a bit. Hold on. Yeah, so camp in the tent. I mean, I do actually like this thing, this tent, because it gets you off the ground. Any tent that gets you off the ground where you can sit on the edge and you don't feel the ground underneath you and all the hardness, awesome. Uh, Bruce was tossing and turning a bit last night, <laughs> as he usually does, he rolls over. So uh, occasionally we bump into each other, which would wake me up. Um, but I, it would have just been horrible in there if it hadn't been for the aircon. So thanks again, EcoFlow. That was amazing. Definitely got its use last night. That's the longest I've used it where I've left it on continuously. A fan wouldn't have done it uh, because I needed to get fresh air from the outside into the tent uh, and swirl it around and push it out the top vents. So that's what I did last night and that worked really well. So yeah, I slept well. The mattress is super comfortable on this. You do tend to gravitate to the middle of the bed, obviously, because it, it goes down into the middle. So yeah, Bruce and I were sort of <laughs> pressed up against each other most of the night, but that's fine. He likes that. Right, do you want some water? Hmm? Bruce, hang on. Bruce, Bruce, hold on. There you go. So, it was comfy. I was happy. Happy chap. Coffee. Bruce, come on, out of here. Oh, God. It's never enough, is it? You always got to have a bit more. So who can guess what I'm having for breakfast this morning? I'm sure someone will get it. Fire maple, that's what this thing's called. It's a very quick kettle, I have to say. The handle system's not as good as the Tranger and neither is the lid. But this diffuser just makes it so quick that it's worth it. It's a bit heavier than the Tranger, but only slightly. But the thing is, what it means is less fuel required to boil the kettle because it's so quick. With this diffuser. I don't know why Tranger haven't tried putting a diffuser on theirs, but they're very old, old school. They haven't changed their methods in decades, so I'm assuming they're just not interested in any change, modernizing it at all. Okay, so breakfast after I've had my coffee. So I'll bring you back for breakfast. Thanks again for everyone for coming. Okay, everyone, time for me to put breakfast on. So, who can guess, or who guessed what I'm having for breakfast? Yeah, you'd have to sort of know my channel to work out what it's gonna be. But it's a car camp, so it's waffles. Just because I say it's waffles, it doesn't mean it's going to work properly. Bruce, come on, you're in the way. What are you doing? Hey? He thinks there's more. It's because I keep saying the word breakfast, but he's had his. <laughs> so naughty. Right. So not only have I got waffles this morning, I've also got bacon. But here's the kicker. I'm going to do the bacon because one of my followers said this, I can't remember which one it was, said this a while ago, um, you can do, you can do bacon in the waffle maker. And I was like, really? So I'm actually going to give it a go. 
excuse the R shot. Okay, so crank that up to max. Right, let's get the bacon. My little 22 liter brass monkey fridge, doing very well. It's been running off the EcoFlow Delta Max all night. Okay, so you're gonna hear the fans come on on this thing now, cause it's 800 watts. It's cranking. Right, Bruce, I'm sorry, you're just, you're in the way. Come on, come on, you're being a pest. Go away, go on, go lie down. I don't know why you're doing that. I don't know why you're loitering. I think it's because we haven't camped for so long, a month. He's, um, he's just a bit confused. That might be it. So bacon in the waffle maker. Now, I don't know, is this gonna work? Let's have a look. Let me bring you in close for this one. I brought you in much closer in, and guess what? It's starting to rain. I can hear little raindrops. Should I pack the tent away before it chucks down? Yes. All right, let me turn the waffle maker off. Okay. Let's pack up the tent because it's horrible packing up a wet tent. So let's do that. What I'll do is I'll throw everything in the back, bedding, the works. Let me move you out the way a bit. So you can see what I'm doing here. And if you're trying to see where Brucey is, he's just there. <laughs> there he is, on cue. All right, um, so let's pack everything away. It's Brucey's towel. Yeah, there's nothing worse than packing away a soaking wet tent. It really isn't. Pea bottle. Pea bottle is essential when you're camping. Because you don't want to get out in the middle of the night and pee. Okay. Charged up all my camera gear last night with this. Again, thanks EcoFlow. This is the uh, River Max does a great job. All right. So, might be easier. do this on my tailgate. Bruce, come on, being a pest. Okay, so for, Bruce, come on, move, come on, out of here. Go on, go away. Oi, oi, oi. What's going on with you? Oh, wow. It's socking wet <laughs> under the mattress. 
Wow, it's so wet. Look at that. Particularly where Bruce was lying. That's the problem with this tent. Just the condensation. Look at that, soaking wet mattress. So that is gonna to have to air when I get home. So just be aware with this tent. Um, move you so you can see what I'm talking about. Just be aware that with these Oz tents, see, it doesn't matter what you do, you just can't avoid the condensation in there. I'm surprised I don't see more people complaining about it. It's that bad. I've never had this in any other type of tent, only these Oz tents. I just don't get it. I don't know why they have so much condensation in them. Something to do with the design. I mean, if you don't care about that, then they're a brilliant tent, but it does get a bit annoying after a while. Okay, is that how you do it? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, and I think the tent just goes on top. Okay. Nope, I've got that. I've got that completely the wrong way around. <laughs> oh, Brucey. Bruce, why didn't you tell me I had that the wrong way around? Hmm? There you go, that's better. There you go, what an idiot. It's early. Oh yeah, that's better. Okay, I'm getting there. Okay, if this is the first time you've watched my channel, just go easy on me. <laughs> it's been a while since I've camped and doing it for YouTube is much harder than just doing it. Okay, so now I've got to put the tent down. So, See, Bruce thinks, Bruce is so confused now. He thinks we're actually going now, but we're not. We're just breaking this down. And you know what? The last time I was in this tent, actually, yeah, the last time I was in this tent, I broke it down early there as well. So that was, uh, wow, it's wet in there. Hang on, let me get Bruce's towel and just give it a mop. Yeah, under the mattress, absolutely soaked so last time we were in this tent a huge storm came in in fact it was the huge storm that caused all the damage on our property the second time and uh, what I did was and it was a river crossing to get back out and I just couldn't sleep because I knew what was coming and so I made the decision at sort of four o'clock in the morning five o'clock in the morning to break down tent early because I didn't want to do the river crossing if it got out of control. Um, you know, I could have stayed put, but I had Bruce with me as well, so got responsibilities. And I'm responsible for his safety. And also, I'm not risking my life for YouTube. Okay, I didn't really guy the back out, I just attached it to a couple of rocks. But I didn't need to, there was no wind at all. We good? I think we're good, okay. Now you can. Keep this all open. So I kept these doors open last time and it worked fine. Yeah. In fact, I think you meant to keep the doors open. 
Okay, and then this. This was rolled up. Yeah, so last time, that time that we stayed in this tent, so when I did bail, the condensation was pretty appalling, I have to say. And the other big three-man version of this that goes on the ground that I've camped in a few times now, I did a two-nighter in it in Mount Cook in the freezing snow, oh, in the freezing cold, where we had all sorts of weather. Um, that was terrible condensation, yeah. So, solid tents, you know, pretty bulletproof, but just massive condensation problems. The worst I've ever seen in any tent, without a doubt. But they are strong, really strong. Okay, there's no graceful way to do this. Hey, it is easy, I've got to say. Um, yeah, they're really strong. This floor is super thick. If you can put up with the condensation, then I guess it's not a problem. Okay, so A, this is, this is what the A and B is for. B, like so. Okay. And then that just goes on right here. I think. What did I get that the wrong way around again? I've got it the wrong way around again. I'm struggling this morning. Really struggling. <laughs> uh, yeah, wrong way around. There we go. We got there in the end, Brucey. You know what? No, you can't do it on the back of the bed. I'm gonna have to move this. Oh, no, you can, okay. Come on, zip. Yeah, I don't want to put anyone off buying an Oz tent, but they are flipping expensive. These, these are very, very expensive tents, but you do get a lot for your money. They are pretty bomb-proof, I've got to say. I mean, they're what, designed to be used in the Australian outback. But I just wish they could fix the condensation problem, but it's because it's a single wall tent and single wall tents have condensation problems. Saying all of that, look how simple that really was. That wasn't difficult at all. Okay. Why have I put the other thing so far away? You're getting loads of butt shots this morning. Sorry about that. Okay, the stretcher. Oh, I haven't put the poles in. Bruce, that's your fault. <laughs> Not really. God, I'm nattering this morning, aren't I? I sound like my, my uh, 80 year old neighbor. She, uh, Heather, she natters like this all the time.
blah, 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 blah. Okay, but she's lovely. And we'll go and see them in the UK. Then we go on our holiday. Right, so, stretcher. So sway bars. This thing is heavy, by the way, because it's so solid. So if you are gonna get it, be prepared for that. Urgh, which way round is this? Okay. We're in business. Right. So we take the poles off. This is the right thing to do, because if it does start raining, it's not gonna be fun. Doesn't get much simpler. So many straps on this thing. Okay, that's it. Yeah, that is heavy. Oh. Keep having to move you back and forth. Sorry about that. In case you're getting dizzy. Usually I do the camera movement thing a lot more artistically and pretend I've magically moved, the, the camera has magically moved. But, but it's my first camp for a long time, so I can't bother to do that. Next time, full cinematography will be back to usual. Hey, all done. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. All I've got to do is take it home and dry it out and we're sorted. Right, where were we? Breakfast. All right, all my bits and bobs. I am making life hard for myself this morning. I really am. Okay, my ouch pouch, which is my first aid kit. Always keep that handy. All right, let's turn this back on to full. Let's mind out, Brucey. Put the small eco flow back in there. 
think I can, can I sit down now? Oh. You see, Bruce is so confused because <laughs> he thinks we're going now. So he wants to get in the front seat. That's what he wants to do. Wow, that's really fogged in. I mean, all, all I can see is just a few trees. <laughs> There's not much else to see because it's just, we're just in the fog. But I will still, I'll try and get the drone up um, to film us going out, just so you can see what's around. I was gonna carry on up this road, but it's, it's just so foggy. We're, we're right in the clouds, so it's not worth doing. All right, so I don't know what temperature to put this on. I've got it set to max. I just need it. Hmm. Oh, you know what I will need is my pancake mix, waffle mix. So I can make that in advance while I'm waiting. full one this time. I get a lot of questions about this. Where do you get those these pancake mix things from? Just the supermarket here in New Zealand. And it just saves a whole lot of hassle. They're pretty convenient. stick a tiny bit at the bottom. I don't know if you can see him. Can you see him down here? He's right under me because he knows I'm cooking something. Right, so I'm waiting for the ready light to come on. Um, is there anything I need to do in the meantime? Not really. I might just quickly show you what I'm talking about. Oh no, well you've already seen it. You saw it last night. It's exactly what I showed you, but completely fogged in. Can't see anything out there. Hmm. All right, I'll bring you back when this is up to temperature. Okay. Am I in focus? Oh, I can't tell. <laughs> it's very difficult to see from all the way back there. Yes, I am. All right, so the beep has gone off. Oh, that's hot. Okay, so what we'll do, I'm gonna put the whole lot in. I'm not gonna do it a single layer and let it cook through because I think if I do that and then put it on top as well, won't that cook both ways? Or do I, should I have done it single layer at a time? Have I just screwed up? We'll see. It's making all the right noises. Oh, do I separate it? Is it going to be much quicker? No, I've committed to it now. I've, I've made my bed. I'm hoping the heat will just rise through it and it will just cook. It smells superb though. And it's a non-stick coating already, so I don't need to spray it or anything like that. So this bacon is middle bacon dry cured Manuka smoked pestles from Marlborough. They do fantastic bacon, they really do. It's beautiful stuff. 
Oh, actually, this is working. Look at that. Hey, it is working. It's cooking. All right, it's going to take a while, so I'll bring you back when it's done. Bacon in a waffle maker. Oh, yeah. waiting for any bacon to fall. It's almost there. So the, the fog has, has cleared, the clouds. Where are you going? Lovely morning. The only thing you can hear is my bacon sizzling. And Bruce is going to make a beeline straight back to where I'm cooking the bacon. It's been a great campsite, I have to say. Beautiful spot. Okay. Back to the bacon. All right. So to the person who, uh, Bruce, no, 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 no. Come on. So it's because I started talking. So to the person who recommended I do this, great call. I mean, it, it, it's, it's cooked it to perfection. And I did set, it did naturally just separate out as it was cooking, so that worked. Okay, so I can do the pancakes now. So I've got to get rid of that fat. I'll just pour it over the edge. Make sure Bruce is nowhere near when I do this. So let me bring you back when I've poured the fat away. All right. So he will... Now, Bruce is sitting at my feet because he knows. He does get a piece of bacon, but he's got to wait until... He's, he's got to, he's down here, just to set my word for it. Um, he's got to wait until I've had mine. Right, so I've put it back on. So I'm just waiting for the ready light to come on. And then we'll do the pancake. Oh, here we go. Okay. So the trick with the waffle maker is do not overfill it. which I might have just done. I might have got away with that. It smells good. Okay, so we just wait for that. Doesn't take long. Um, I think, does it beep when it's ready? Oh, I can't remember. No, I just have to keep checking it uh, until it's golden. And then we're good to go. I've got the family of bellbirds back again. Singing away. I don't know if the microphone's picking that up though. There's like five or six of them around here. The natural nature sounds of the, the battery bank. And Brucey at my feet waiting. Are you waiting for your bacon? Hmm? Are you waiting for your bacon? He's such a greedy chops, he really is. He loves. So Brucey is very happy to be here also because it gives him a break from Bruno. <laughs> Bruno is the most loving puppy you can possibly imagine. If it's the first time you've seen our channel, Bruno is our puppy. He's now, what is he, five? 
five months old? Or is he six months? Maybe six months. Um, he's so loving. Oh, he's so affectionate to everybody. But the one he's most affectionate to is Bruce. He adores Bruce. And Bruce can't stand him. No, there's no love there. He, he just... If you've ever seen the film Babe, and you know there's the, uh, the alpha male, the boss, got the boss border collie, that's Bruce. He doesn't, he's not, he doesn't want to have kisses with Bruno, but that's all Bruno wants to do is kiss Bruce, and he kisses him constantly, and Bruce does all he can not to bite him. And his, his fangs are out, and he's like this, and Bruce is it, Bruno's in his face, licking him, licking him, licking him. And then in the end, Bruce will bite him. Yeah. He's just grumpy. He's old. He's, he's 11. And Bruno's a puppy. How would you feel if you were old, you know, in your 70s? <laughs> and you've got, you got a little kid keeps coming into your face all the time. It gets overwhelming. So, yeah, he, he, he can't stand it. He doesn't put up with that for very long. Oh, that's looking good. So he needs a break from Bruno as well. So out here, it's all just me and him, and he loves it. Uh, at home, he does play with Bruno a lot. I mean, they play fight all the time. They pull the rope and stuff like that. It's just he doesn't let Bruno in his personal space, ever, ever. Bruno loves to go and try and lie next to him up close, and he just growls and snarls and gets up and walks away. So he never lets him in his personal space. But Bruno is sort of understanding it sort of oh and here's the rain look at that right how are we looking is that done i want it a bit crispier than that let's put it on six okay let me get the umbrella for the camera so look at that, they got the forecast right. Is that good? Yeah, that's good. We might have to do double waffles, I don't know. Okay, so I need to give Bruce his. That little rock down there is a good spot to put Bruce's. Now he will wolf this down in one go. Let me turn that off. I think I need to chop this up for him. This is Brucey's. Wait, Bruce. You're gonna have to wait. Wait. No. No. Sit. 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 And wait. Good boy. Just wait. And my waffle. And we want lashings of maple syrup. So there we have. I don't know if it's going to be in focus. There we have a beautiful waffle and waffle maker made bacon with lashings of maple syrup. Go on then, Brucey, good boy. So I've got my handy spork from Gerber Tools. I can work out how to open it. So these are all things that I want to take to the tops. With me. 
Look, I'm not, I'm eating it on the table. I'm trying anyway. Is he eating that whole thing? Oh my God, he's eating the whole thing. Someone time that, just go back and check. How long did that just take him to eat that? I'm sure it was only, it was less than 10 seconds. Oh, it's got a mouthful of this pancake waffle. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Oh yeah. That tastes excellent. Okay. Waffle maker bacon. Who knew that was a thing? Yeah, whoever um suggested that. Great success. That was awesome. Thank you for that. The only thing that's missing is now having a coffee with this. So let's put a coffee on. This is the life. And this is camping. This isn't glamping. I'm 14, what, what did I say I was? 1,200, 1,300 meters, I don't know, 4,000 feet. I'm 4,000 feet up a mountain. This isn't a campsite. Think about that. I've just bought a load of good gear with me, that's all. Mm. Oh yeah. I think one waffle is enough. Because with the bacon as well, it's so filling. Oh, the flavors. The Manuka bacon. With mm. if you're wondering what manuka is, I'm sure I've said it before. Like you'll hear of manuka honey. Um, so when it says manuka smoked, that's nothing to do with the honey. That's just the manuka wood. They've smoked it with manuka wood. And um, we're quite high here. I don't know if there's any manuka around. There's a manuka, okay, there's a manuka tree down there. I'll, I'll show you the manuka tree afterwards. And so the, the bees, and there's flowers on it actually, so the bees go to that, and that's where you get your manuka honey from. People pay a lot of money for Manuka honey because they think it's got these massive health benefits, you know, cure diseases or something, cure hay fever or whatever. But to be honest, it doesn't do any of those things. It's a bit of a marketing con. Um, Manuka honey, the, the Maori people from New Zealand, the Pacific Islanders, yes, they used to use it. 
but to treat wounds. I mean, obviously it's sugar, so it's great. And is it better for you than processed sugar? Probably, yeah. Well, yeah, of course it is. Everything's better than processed. But the healing properties in it are topical. Once you swallow it and it goes in your gut, it doesn't do anything. So yeah, people spending a fortune on Manuka honey because uh, they think consuming it will has health benefits. I don't think it does at all. And my brother's a gastroenterologist and he said, yeah, honestly, it doesn't do anything. Your gut acids destroy anything that was any good in there. Bruce, where are you? What are you doing all the way around there? Mm. That was superb. Right, let me show you the Manuka tree. So I'm gonna take my coffee with me. I don't know if the, the weather hasn't made up its mind if it wants to rain or not. It was just raining and then just suddenly stopped. So that big fluffy green shrub there is Manuka. And this one here. So those flowers, you can see those white flowers on there. The bees go on there, get their nectar from there and produce the honey. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Gosh, just made myself sneeze. And um, yeah, that's how you get your Manuka honey. If, uh, actually, there's quite a lot of it around. If you see Manuka, and you you grab it uh, and you crunch up the leaves in your hands and you smell it it's a beautiful smell really beautiful Bruce where are you going mm -hmm. we're not going that way Look at the valley Oh, let's go and see what Lake Chalice looks like. So Lake Chalice, in case you missed it, was where I camped by the lake. That was another new spot for me. I'm doing a lot of new spots. Uh, so I hope no one complains about the fact that I camp at the same old spot sometimes, because I'm trying to find new spots. Oh, look, there's, there's some bees on the Manuka flowers here, bumblebees on there. Wow. Now this isn't Manuka, this is Hebe. Look at all the bumblebees. I love bumblebees, I love bees. Oh, look at the lake. Oh, it's just so pretty. I'll try and zoom it in a bit on the edit. But this is a GoPro. GoPro quality isn't that great. It's a magical spot. It's very, very low. I think it's even lower than when I was last camped there and it was low. Hmm. Which is amazing considering the amount of rain we've been getting. Yeah, lovely. Come on, Brucey. Back to camp. <sighs> it's a hard life. Someone's got to do it. <laughs> right. Bring you back for packing down the awning and then putting packing everything away. 
and then it's the drone footage out. So bring you back for that. All right, welcome back everybody. Time to pack everything away. Great breakfast, lovely coffee. Oh. I know, Brucey, we're going home. So, usually I fast forward this bit. But <laughs> as it's a new year, just this once I'll do it in real time. And if, if you don't like that, you can just fast forward yourself to the drone footage of me driving out. But some people want to see the pack up, they want to see how long it takes, <clears throat> what hassle it is, you know, all those things. Okay, so first things first, We need to get the tent in the back because it's the biggest component. Oh. Okay. So it doesn't fit perfectly in. It has to go in at an angle. Oh God, that is heavy. I don't know how much the stretcher weighs. Is it it's something like 17 kilos? Pizza oven, superb. Okay, so let's put chair away. Nothing in the pockets. This Spartan chair is Oz Trail. It's okay. It's it's functional. It's pretty comfy. But it's quite bulky. It's not the best Austrail don't make very good stuff. I think they used to, but then I think they got bought out or they sold out to a company in China. So they claim to be Aussie, but I don't think they are anymore. And their quality control is, is pretty naff, I have to say. The tent that I had, Two tents, in fact, that I tried of Oz Trails, Oops. both leaked. Two different types of tent, both leaked. Um, one of them leaked all over Bruce. It was a nightmare. I was very angry about that. Okay. So, the fridge. Plug that back into the truck. Shut the eco flow down. Eco flow, if you're listening, you know what would be good next time you make one of these is to have the grab handle at the top. I know these are made to be stacked, but if you could make it so you could carry this one handed without it sort of hanging like this, it would be useful. It doesn't obviously make any difference to the quality of the product. It's still very good. But just be nice to easily be able to use one hand. He said. Right. We're making progress. So if you're wondering 
why Bruce is sort of loitering here. It's because he's waiting for me to open the front door so he can go and jump in. It's just his habit. It's what he does when he knows we're packing up. It's what he does. And Bruce is a creature of habit. A lot of people won't have seen my channel before, so they really won't know anything about Bruce. The number one question I get about him is, what breed is your dog? He is a purebred Border Collie. They are not great, well, purebred ones are not great pets for normal households. I'll be honest. You've got to have a lot of land, a lot of time on your hands to take them out with you. Um, neither Anne or I work, you know, we're retired. So, that's my wife. So there's someone always with the pups, because Bruno is also a purebred Border Collie from a working family, working lineage. If you don't give them access to all this stuff, training, um, agility stuff, and lots of, you know, company and things like that, then they'll wreck your house. They've, they can be very destructive. Yeah, so woe betide, you don't do all that and you get a Border Collie. So as much as people love Bruce, they really do love him and they really want a Border Collie. It's just not, they're not a practical breed for most people. I would say. If I put this in upside down, yeah. No, I haven't. It was correct. No, oh, I had it right the first time. These collapsible crates are awesome. You just pull a couple of levers on the side and it whole fold, the whole thing folds down. They are great. Okay, that goes in the back. Has anyone seen Teletubbies before? Oh, my plate. Uh, Teletubbies was a UK TV show. And on it was a, a thing called Nunu, which was a, the vacuum cleaner that cleaned everything up. And this looks like Nunu, so we nicknamed this EcoFlow unit Nunu. Bruce gets called Nunu quite a bit as well. Bruno is definitely a Nunu. He cleans up all the time. <laughs> when Anne's cooking, or I'm cooking for that matter. But not so much because I don't drop as much. When Anne's cooking, the pair of them, the pair of them lie at her feet waiting for something to fall off the top. And I know Anne, if you're watching, I know that a lot of that is deliberate. Oh, oops, oops. Drop some things for them, for the puppies. Wow, this, this pack down is going very, very well. Great success. Nothing to see here with the empty bottle of wine. 
I'm sure Aaron will say something. You drank that whole thing. Yep, certainly did. It was lovely. Okay, table. So, I wonder if it's possible to... take this shelf off in situ. Oh, you can. Why have I never used this shelf before? It's flipping brilliant. I know, some of you are thinking, God, I wish you'd sped this bit up. <laughs> so am I now. Yeah, I like this, I like the shelf. Thank you, King Camp, for sending me this table. I don't get paid, by the way, for any of this stuff, just the EcoFlow one, because they sponsored the video. All this other gear, sometimes I let them send me stuff. Most of the time I don't. I just say, no thanks, I'm not interested. I'll buy stuff that I need, but I didn't have a table. I thought, eh, I'm always buying things. If someone's willing to send me something and it turns out to be good, then why not? Save me some money. And as it turns out, the table was awesome. I mean, come on, what's not like, what's not to like about that bamboo table? And it's just, it's so convenient. I do like it. And I will put a link to it in the description as usual. By the way, I, I don't put links in the comment section. So in case you're looking for any of this gear and you say, oh, can you put a link to the table or a link to the chair or whatever? It'll never be in the comment section. I don't do that. I don't allow links in the comment section because then it gets flooded with all sorts of other erroneous scam stuff. Okay. Right, so this is my camera bag. Okay, so just gonna put the awning away. Oh, I don't know why I shut the back up. I've gotta get the peg bag out and the hammer out to pull those pegs out of the ground. I got ahead of myself there. Ugh. As always, make sure you've got a decent um, camp hammer. Camp hammers are a little bit different because they've got that hook on the end to get in there. So you can hook on to the pegs to get them out of the ground. Now, as much as I love this Iron Man Delta Wing awning, again, I paid for this. This isn't a sponsored video for them. It's a bugger to put away. It takes some patience. And I'm not the most patient person in the world. So, 
This comes up last. So let's put the poles away. So this thing is actually strong enough, as you can see, to, uh, it doesn't need the poles, but obviously much, much more secure with the poles on. So if there's any chance there's gonna be wind, you know, or at nighttime, definitely, because you don't wanna be dealing with a broken awning in the middle of the night, then definitely put the poles out. Okay, hockey. Brucey, I know you want to get in. He's desperate to get in the car, hang on. Because he's just, this is his thing. Honestly, it's just what he does. I don't even have to say anything and he's going to jump in. Okay, let's, uh, see, told you. It's getting bright now. All right, strap on the other side. And right, if you're wondering what this is on the top here, this is a massive 400 watt LED light bar. I've taken the spots off the front, I'm getting new spots. This thing, oh my word, it is bright. But technically you're not allowed to use it on the road, but off road you can. And that's primarily why I got it because I do a lot of off road. So it fits together, if you get it right, it sort of stacks perfectly like that, okay? And then this thing, believe it or not, you do not roll it up. I've tried so many times with it rolled up and it doesn't work. So you actually squish it up. Don't ask me why, I have no idea. but it's a bit damp, so you know what? I've got to undo the whole thing when I get home anyway and let it dry out at home. So it's not gonna be perfect because there's no need. Well, I wish I had Brandon with me. Brandon's six foot four. My son, he's 17, just about to turn 18. February the 9th, a week before my birthday, which is February 17th. So this bulge in the middle is probably going to be blocked, but that's okay because I've got to undo it all when I get home. So sometimes I drive back with it open. Oh, I might have got it. I don't think so. 
Iron Man, if you're watching, this zip here, nightmare. And the awning cover you could have made with an inch more give. Because it's one thing setting these things up in the factory floor. It's another thing doing it when you're out here. And when it's freezing cold, <laughs> and the thing is covered in frost and ice and you're trying to scrape it off, it is a nightmare to put away. So Iron Man, hope you're listening. Make a bigger cover for it. Doesn't matter if it's a bit loose. Rent over. Oh. <laughs> it's a workout putting that thing away, I'm telling you. Okay. Straps away. Oh, and now, I, I, did I just say it looks like it's getting brighter? Now it looks like it's gonna chuck down. This weather just can't make up its mind. And that's it. Let me show you, Bruce. <laughs> He's no fool, is he? Mm. He knows he knows the routine. Okay, everybody. I am going to hit the road, but uh, I'm going to film it. I'm going to get the drone up now and film us driving out and I'll aim the camera forward so you can see the road. And then further down, I'll stop and uh, give a recap and say our goodbyes there. So I'll bring you back in a minute with the drone. All right, we're off. And I'm hoping you can see me on the drone. It's flying all by itself, obviously. I'm not, uh, <laughs> there's no way I'm controlling it when driving down here and you'll see what I mean shortly. So I don't need to even be in gear. And look, we're in the clouds here. So it's important to remember that the brakes are cold. warm them up. I think there's been some landslips here. They've had to clear this recently. Maybe it's a good job it is foggy and we're in the clouds because <laughs> the view down is, is pretty horrific. Yeah, so coming up that bit is a nightmare. All right, I'm just gonna stay quiet now and let the drone and the camera here do their thing. Uh, broken broken through now 
See, that could be another camp spot there on the left. Just there, maybe. So maybe come up here in the snow, do that bit there, it's a bit more sheltered in the trees and don't have to do that extreme rocky bit at the side there with the big drop. I hope the drone is still following. So this road is called the Staircase Road. And if you're wondering about the drone, it's the DJI Mini Pro 3. And it's on active track mode program to follow the car and it has obstacle avoidance so it avoids the branches and things like that look at where we are now isn't this beautiful uh, now the drone might get stuck here low hanging branches don't know if it's going to find a way through might get stuck there. Yeah, it's gone. All right. <laughs> I've got to go and recover the drone. I'll come back to you and then say our goodbyes. Well, recovered the drone. It was all good. I can't believe it got as far as it did. You can see where it got basically stuck. Uh, it just couldn't get through that. It was too narrow. It was just complaining. Brucey doesn't like the drone. Indeed. Right, everyone. Well, thank you for coming. You're coming up. Come on. You even come out and say goodbye. Go have a look around. This is beautiful. Look at it here. I'm going to do more camping up here. It's a it's a two hours from home, but it's just stunning. A bit creepy. <laughs> Got to admit, in the fog, but beautiful. All right, everyone, thanks so much for coming. Thanks to everyone who uh, has contributed to buy me a coffee, uh, bought us treats on there, uh, bought merch, uh, our YouTube members, Patreon members. Thank you so much. Thank you to everyone who's uh, subscribed and clicked uh, the thumbs up, the like button. That always helps, helps with the algorithm, helps to subscribe, definitely helps with the likes. Um, Thank you to EcoFlow for sponsoring this video. You guys are great. You've been fantastic. Uh, loved working with you guys. Thank you to Brucey for coming along again. You gonna say goodbye to everybody? You've had a great time, haven't you? Lots of play. And you've had a break from Bruno. Should we go and see Bruno? Nope, no interest. All right, everyone. Thanks for coming and see you again soon um for a wild camp that i'm hoping to do in two days time but the video won't come out for a, another week or so so see you again soon bye everybody bye brucey bye guys <laughs>